What's going on, family? Good evening to everybody. I mean, it's once again that uh, we get this opportunity to to study the Word of God um, together as a family. So, listen, before we start, I want you to do me a favor. Let's do some house stuff. Do me a favor. Go ahead and share. Um, go ahead and um, and share for me. Uh, share tag uh, let people know hey uh we're on live tonight uh, to study the word of god to continue our series of just be so let's go ahead and do that let's share um as you come into the to the virtual sanctuary tonight let's share tag somebody let's be very intentional um, on how we spread the word we must use the tools that god has given us to share and so i'm excited tonight to continue in our series of just be week two I'm going to hope you are too. Hello to everybody. Um, hello to all who are online. Um, and so tonight, um, let's get into the word of God. Let's continue in our series. Um, and then let's see what the Lord wants to wants to say to us. All right. Um, Father, we thank you tonight um, just for uh, you being who you are. God, we thank you. We adore you. We extol you. We lift your name up. We magnify you. For you are a great God. God, we thank you for just allowing us to see another day, allowing us, oh God, to, to go through our various destinations today, our very our various tasks today. And you watched over us and you kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. And God, we thank you. Now, God, we pray that you'll forgive us of every sin, anything that God that will hinder us from, from delivering your word, hinder us from hearing your word. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus that God that you will forgive us and freely love us again. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus, that God, that you will have your way tonight, that God, you will have your way in all that you do. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus, that you, O oh God, will sit on us tonight. Let the words that we, we read from the word of God tonight, breathe on us tonight. Breathe on those words tonight that God, that they will speak to us clearly. Father, I just pray now and tonight as the word of God shall come forth, that God, we will all have ears to hear, heart to receive, and the mind to do. And Father, I pray now that you will sit the self of selfishness down in me. And Lord, you will rise. Speak a word to and through me. And God, use me as your vessel the way you see fit. God, use me to the way that God, I may be able to, to open up the text, oh God, and to teach it, oh God, that, there, that even a child would understand. So, God, I thank you in advance, and I bless you, and in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Listen, um, I pray that you've had a great day today. I pray that uh, tonight that you you find yourself in a virtual sanctuary in a good space, and I pray even if not, that after the word tonight, your, your spirit will be lifted. Listen, let's go to the word of God tonight. Um, um, we're continuing in, in talking about the light, and so this, this week... Uh, let's go to Ephesians, Ephesians uh, chapter five, uh, and we're going to restart. Start at the first verse, Ephesians chapter five. Y'all have it. If you got Ephesians chapter five, come on, let me know you have it. Y'all got it? Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Um, and let's begin, let's begin our reading at the um at the first verse. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Whatever version uh you, you're reading from, um, that's fine. We'll be on, on, on one accord. All right. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 says this. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear, dear children. Children, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. I've seen stories, foolish talk, coarse, coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness of God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ 
and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. For the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in the things these people do. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For that, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Verse 10 says, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil, darkness, and darkness. Instead, expose them. Hmm. But the but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. When the light shines on them. I think I read that again. For the light makes everything visible. This is why this is why it is said, awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead. And Christ will give you light. That's in the reading of God's word thus far. Listen, tonight we're going to title this uh, this part two of, of, of just be living in the light. We're going to talk about living in the light. If you could do me a favor, put that in the chat, living in the light. That's what we want to talk about tonight. That's what we want to title part two, part two of our Bible study of our Wednesday empowerment, living in the light. All right. Living in the light. So, so this week, um, we've talked about last week about being on display. We talked about last week of how um, how we're supposed to let our light shine, how we are called to be the light, how we are called. And here at, at Macedonia, we are putting meat to the bones of, of, of our mission statement, just be. Be the light, be the love, and be the change. And so now um, we want to dive into a little bit more of what it means to be the light, not just letting our light shine, but what it means to actually display it and live in the light. Here is the reason why we, it is very important for us to get this tonight and to really to challenge ourselves because tonight it's going to be a challenge for all of us. It's going to be a challenge to, to look at ourselves, look at our walk, look how we live, look at how we're being example. Tonight, we, the word is going to be a mirror and it's going to show us who we are. And so here it is that the reason why we must dive into it, because we must understand as people of God, that there has to be, there must be a difference between the people of God and those who live of the world. I'm going to say it again. There must be a difference between the people of God and those who are not of God. There has to be. And so tonight, I believe Paul challenges us in, in the uh, the fifth chapter of Ephesians. I think he's challenging. I believe he's challenging us tonight because he is he is showing us, telling us that this is how we should live. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. First, the first verse says, and I love the way um, in the New Living Translation, the way it says this, it says, imitate God. Imitate God. It says, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children, dear Dear children, man, I can't talk tonight. He says, imitate God. I love that when it says imitate God, because the first thing I want you to know tonight, that as we deep into the study, as we get into the word of God, I want us to understand that how you live reveals who you follow. How you live reveals who you follow. Say it one more time for those who are taking notes and I keep it on the screen. This is your first empowerment key. How you live. It reveals who you follow. Why do you say that, Pastor Jay? Why do you say how I live reveals who you follow? Here it is. The word of God, Paul says, you are his dear children. And saying it and saying that as being a children, as a child of God, as a child of God, you ought to have some, how can I say this, some attributes of God. I'm going to say that again. As a child of God, you ought to have, we ought to have attributes of God. And so here it is. He says we are to imitate God. That's why it says that's why tonight we must get how we how we live reveals who we follow, because if you live a life pleasing to God, it reveals you follow God. If you live a life that's questionable, then then who you follow is questionable. I hope this is making sense tonight. 
Here it is. We must understand tonight. We must understand this. We must understand this, that even our kids follow us. Even our kids imitate us. That's why we must be careful what we say around them, what we do around them, because they do just that. Uh, all of y'all have fallen in love with my youngest child, Olivia. You see her in church on Sunday morning. She raises her hand. She worships. She pushes me while um, while I preach. It's all because of what the example has been set before, not just by me and my wife, but then when she's in church worshiping, she sees how you worship. She learns that through examples. And because of that, she is imitating that. She is doing just what she learned. It's the same thing what Paul is trying to teach us tonight, trying to tell us tonight that we ought to be imitators of God. Everything we do, somebody will say, man, you are a child of God, just how you act. Here it is. My father taught me this. My father used to say this all the time. He said, son, it's, it's not your words that's your witness. It's your lifestyle. It's not the words that you say. It, it, it's, you can you can say you love God. You can have the biggest Bible. You can you can you can quote all the scriptures. You can pray very well. But it is your lifestyle that witnesses to people. And we must understand it tonight that it is our lifestyle that draws men to Christ. Mm. It's our lifestyle that that compels men and women. Oh my goodness. To come to Christ. Here it is. Here's, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Here's my question What is your lifestyle doing? Is it compelling or is it pushing away? Let, let's talk about this tonight. What, what, when people see us, what, what does our lifestyle do? Does it push them? Does it push them away from Christ or does it pull them into Christ? We must understand that tonight. That we must understand that tonight. That that is very important and very imperative. That we get that, that the first thing Paul tells us is imitate God. Let God be our example. Here it is. Here it is. We are called to imitate God. So in other words, to imitate him requires us to spend time with him. Oh, I'm going to say it again. We are called to imitate God. To imitate God requires us to, to do this, to spend time with him. Because you can't imitate somebody that you don't follow. Mm. Put like this. Let's make sense of this. Bring it home, Pastor. When we watch comedians and we can tell that joke, it is because we have watched that clip so many times that we had that joke down to the science, down to the timing, down to every word. It's because we, oh, we watched it over and over. We heard it over and over. And that's how we can retell a joke. It's the same way with God. You can't imitate somebody mm, that you don't know. You can't imitate somebody that you don't spend time with. And here it is in order to spend time, in order to imitate God, I must understand that I must spend time with God. What does that mean, pastor, to spend time with God? What that means is we must be in his word. Mm. Because in his word, it, it shows us, it teaches us, it, it makes it plain of how we should live. In his word, it shows us the attribute of somebody, that, of a child of God. And so to know him, we must spend time in his word, but also to know him, we must spend time in prayer. Oh, my goodness. These, these are, and, and catch this, y'all. I don't know for some of us, we say, well, pastor, this is, this is, this is elementary. Yeah, it is because we have lost the foundation of our faith. We have lost the foundation that God has given us. And sometimes we got to go back and refresh that thing. We've gotten so we've gotten so comfortable. We've gotten so high and holy that we forgot the foundation. And here it is. That's what God wants to get us back to the foundation. And that's why we must understand we got to get back to spending time with God. Here it is where you spend time is, is where your heart is. Where you spend time is is where your heart is. See, I spent time with First Lady. Intentional time, not accident time. No, I, oh, I got time. So I'm, no, no, there's time that is carved out for just her. Why I shut off the phone, shut off the TV, and it is time where we just 
be intimate together with just conversation, with just some jokes, with some laughs. Why? Because that's where my heart is. And that's the same time with God. God, whether we spend time with him or whether we don't spend time with him reveals where our heart is. Oh, God Almighty. I hope y'all get this tonight. Whether you spend time with him or whether you don't spend time, it reveals to him where our heart is. And so when you spend time with God, intentional time, when you carve out time with God and say, this hour is God time. This hour is just me in prayer. This hour. And it, it, it's so funny because my bishop in Virginia, my pastor, who I follow. It were times where I could not I couldn't get him in certain times of the day. And it was because that was his prayer time. When he wouldn't answer, I knew he was in prayer time. He would cut off his phone because it was intentional time so that there'll be no distractions. For us, our problem is, is that we're too busy with such life, with so much life, with our kids, with our job, with, with Netflix, with Facebook, with Instagram, whatever it is, we're busy and we're too busy to spend time with God. That's why you can't imitate God because you don't know him. Time on Sunday doesn't equate you know him. Oh, goodness. Time on Wednesday doesn't say you know him. It is the time that, that, that nobody's telling you to go to church. It is the time that nobody's telling you to come to Bible study. It is that time that is intimate and that is intentional that you will now know who God is. Catch this. When you spend time with him, you know who God is, but then you know how he loves you, how he cares for you his plans for you. That's why we must, we must spend time with God in order to imitate him. Here it is. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper to the word. Verse two says, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Here it is. He's here Paul goes again, live a life filled with love. He first starts tells us to imitate him, but then he says, live a life filled with love. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get in love. We're gonna, we're gonna get with love real soon because love is the next thing. But let, let's talk about this. He says, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He's letting us know we imitate God, but here it is. There's an example. Catch this. There is a cheat code. In other words, what he's saying is you don't have to figure this thing out. You don't you don't you don't have to to guess this thing. It's there. The example, the example is Jesus Christ. So he is saying to imitate God, spend time with God. But then catch this. Look at the example set before you. And he says, live a life filled with love. We ought to know. People ought to know who you are by, by the love you give. Not by the words you say, I love you. We can say I love you, but love is an action word. And so he says, live a life filled with love. In other words, live a life filled with actions of love. Oh, that's good. Live a life filled with actions of love. Catch this. He loved us and offered himself. See, that was, that was that's action. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. He is showing us through his actions of sacrificing his life, of dying on the cross, that that's how much I love you. Here it is. Let's get deeper. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. If, if it cuts us tonight, we're just going to say, ouch, put a little Band-Aid on it, and keep moving. All right? Here it is. Now Paul sets the stage. We imitate God. Tells us, follow the example of Jesus Christ. But then what I love about Paul that now Paul begins to list some things. He says, let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Here it is, no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. We're going we're gonna to put a pin right there. And, and, and I want to deal with this. I want to teach this. And the reason why I want to teach this is because we will tell you what not to do. We would tell you, you shouldn't do this. We would tell you, you can't do this. But we never give people um, things to fight off these desires. Oh, can I? Oh, I might get in trouble tonight. I was raised in church. 
and they and they and they would tell us don't do this don't do that but they would never help us because the Bible tells us, let there be, he says, Paul says, sexual immorality. That's the first thing he lists. He says, first thing he lists, let there be no sexual immorality. Paul, I need help. Paul, I need help. I need help. And it's for all of us. This ain't just, it's for all of us. This may not be your battle, but this may be somebody's battle. And I want to help them tonight. Because here it is, the first thing he says, let there be no sexual immorality. But Paul, my flesh. What happens at two in the morning and my flesh gets weak and I get the text message that says, are you up? What, what happens? What happens? What happens? Here it is. Let's talk about this. Let's, let's look at it. sexual morality is defined as any activity in the realm of, 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 of intercourse that lies outside of of a marriage relationship because we know this and we may not know this but let's be honest the bible says a marriage marriage bed is undefiled he don't look at that bed praise god he don't look at that bed but let's talk about those who are not married let's talk about that let's deal with that can we deal with that let's deal with that here it is let's go to matthew 26 and 41 i'm gonna help us tonight i'm gonna help us tonight matthew 26 and 41 Bible says, keep watch and pray so that you will that you will not give into temptation for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Another version said, but the flesh is weak. Keep watch and pray so that you will not give into temptation for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is Jesus talking to talking, talking to Peter and telling him, hey, kind of gearing him up. What's going to happen? Temptation is coming. Y'all hear, hear, here it is. Temptation is coming. And can I, and can I say this? Yes, I'm going to say this to, to all of, all of those who are listening. And for those who are going to listen later, the, the devil, the enemy is not red with horns and with a pitchfork. That's not who he is. That's not what he looks like. I'm going to say it again. He, he's not red. He doesn't have horns and he doesn't have a pitch for it. The enemy knows your weakness. The enemy knows what your flesh desires. The enemy knows. This is why Paul listens about sexual morality, impurity, and greed. Because he knows, he knows what messes us up. I never forget. I never forget. I had an old deacon to tell me. I, I never forget this. He says, he says, young preacher, let me tell you something. He said, two things that'll mess up your marriage. Not, not mess, he said, mess up your ministry. He said, two things that are mess up your ministry is money and honey. God rest, God rest Deacon Bill's soul. He said, money and the honey. Those are two things because he understands that's the flesh. That's the flesh. Those are our desires. That is what we see. And so here it is. I want to deal with that. Jesus tells Peter, we need to watch and pray. So if you know, if you know what you like. If you know your weaknesses and you know that the enemy is going to pounce on that, always watch and pray. In other words, you need to make sure to sure up those weak areas in your life. God, did that just run? Am I off? I'm on. I'm sorry. I got disturbed. Somebody tried to FaceTime me. Praise God. Here it is. Here it is. I need to know my weakness. I need to know. And I need to be able to watch and pray. Watch the enemy. When life gets real good, y'all, can I be honest? When life gets real good and the enemy is not messing with you, that's when you need to watch and pray. When there is no problems, when there's nothing going on, when it's sunny, no rain is falling, that's when you need to watch and pray and watch where the enemy is going to attack you at. Watch for your weak areas. Watch it. And here it is. Y'all, let me help you with something. Pray on that. Oh, this is going to be good tonight. This is not even my notes, but I, I just, I got, I got, I feel in my spirit. We need to dive into this. You need to take those weak areas and stop hiding them. 
Because too many times we're, we're ashamed and so we hide them. Y'all catch this. When you hide what, what you're dealing with, what you're fighting with, the enemy is beating your head up. While, while you're hiding it because you're embarrassed, the enemy is on you, is whipping you. But if, when you tag somebody in, when you tell your brother, when, when you have an accountability partner, when you have somebody praying with you, you can defeat the enemy. But it's not until you expose that thing. Here it is. Oh, God, deal with us tonight. We have to understand that when I expose it, the enemy can no longer use it. Mm, I'm going to say that again. When I expose it, the enemy can no longer use it. And see, when I expose his weapon, he can't use it no more. Because I didn't expose it. I didn't let him know. This is what it is. This is what I'm dealing with. And that is what we have to understand. He says, watch and pray. But then I want to give you 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. I gave you Matthew 26 and 41. Somebody put that in the chat. And then 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Somebody put that in the chat for me. So somebody can write this down and have this. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. Let's deal with that first. I'm talking to those who, who when we list this stuff out, this is the stuff that you're dealing with. There is no temptation. No temptation is different. No temptation in your life are no different from what others experience. Here is what I want to let you know. You are not alone. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who. I don't know who this message is for. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I want to let you know you are not alone. What you're dealing with, somebody has dealt with and came out of it and got the victory. Oh, I'm going to say this again. What you're dealing with, somebody has dealt with, came out of it with the victory. One thing about me as your pastor, I'm going to always be tra transparent. And the reason why I'm going to be transparent is so because I'm going to let you know that I'm human too. That I've been through some things, that I that I've seen some things, I've experienced some things, I fell into some traps, and I'm going to be transparent and let you know if God can bring me out, so can He do? He can do the same thing with you. And so here it is. He says there is no the temptation in your life are no different from what others experience. We're witnesses. You got witnesses on the line tonight. Wave your hand tonight for those who've been, who've been, wave your hand. We got witnesses. We got people who've experienced this. And so here it is. He says, and God is faithful. Catch this. First thing is, there's nothing that you're experiencing. Nobody else has experienced. Second thing is, is this. God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more God Almighty than you can stand. Oh, my goodness. He would not allow the temptation to be more than what you can stand. So in other words, whatever you're tempted by, you can defeat it. Whatever area your flesh is weak in, you can defeat it because there's nothing. There is nothing that you're going through. My God, today, there is nothing that you're going through that you can't come out of. Nothing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Ooh -wee. This is getting good already. There is nothing. And then he says, when you are tempted. Catch this, y'all. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Oh, my goodness. Oh, listen, put this in the chat. Thank God for the exit door. Come on, put that in the chat. Thank God for the exit door. He says, when you are tempted, he will show you a way out. Here it is. So if you're tempted and you fall, it's because you're not looking for a way out. I'm going to pause right there. If you are tempted and he says he will show you a door. If you're falling, it was because I wasn't looking for the door. In everything that you're tempted in. That you look for the door. Lord have mercy. Somebody. Oh, my goodness. Look for the exit door because he has a door for you to walk out of. 
when you were tempted, when you're going through, when you feel it, look for the door. Oh, my goodness. Woo! Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Look for the door. Look for it. That's why we have to. He said, look for the door because he says, I'm always going to have a way out for you. So he says, as Paul is saying, he's saying to the church of Ephesus, he says, listen, listen, let such sins have no place among God's people. Impurity or greedy among you. Greedy. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you're greedy, you become immoral. immoral. Let's deal with that. When you're greedy, you start stealing. It's never enough for you. So you'll do things to get money. He said, no, greedy, impurity. He, in other words, he said, this has no place among God's people. It shouldn't even be named among us. These, these, these are things that we shouldn't even be dealing with. But we deal with it. It happens. But this is why I say we're talking about living in the light. He says, he says, it should not, these have no place among God's people. They should never be able to say, say man, immoral, you greedy, and you're doing everything else. That should even be named among us. Let's go, let's go, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Oh man. Because now it talks about, so now we we we, we talked about. In being pure, we talked about immorality, sexual morality. We talked about greedy. That's, that's, that, that, but let's go. Let's go deeper. Now he says, "Let's talk about your mouth." I've seen stories, foolish talk, and them bad jokes. Come on, help me here. I've seen stories, foolish talk, and bad jokes. These are not for you. Oh, goodness. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and his jokes. Here it is. Now he's talking about our actions, but now he's talking about how we should talk. Our speech. Because he said, let there be thankfulness to God. Our speech. So here it is, how we act. They should tell who we are. But how we talk. Through our mouth, they should tell who we are. Hmm. Shouldn't be cussing. And you know, some of us mad with our kids now, but they didn't got some of the cuss words from home. Shouldn't. I've seen stories. If, if I put it like this, if your if you can't tell your mom what you're gonna tell somebody, you shouldn't say it. Oh goodness gracious. I hope this makes sense to all of if, if, if I if I don't want my mom to hear it, if my mom can't hear it, then I that shouldn't be me. Because catch this, I'm talking about imitating God. God don't have a nasty mouth. God doesn't have a foul mouth. That's not who, so so now. Now. I got to watch what I say. Y'all, can I go deeper tonight? I won't go deeper. I'm going to go deeper. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19. We're going to talk about we're gonna talk about some of the things that should be named among us. We're going to go deeper. It's talking about living in the light. Proverbs 6, 16, and 19. Because we talk about our speech, right? We, we talk about our speech. We're talking about our actions. So we talked about... Sexual morality, impurity, talked about greediness. We talked about bad jokes, obscene language. We talked about all that, right? Let's go. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. This is what it says. These, there are six things the Lord hates. No seventh thing he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, Feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who sows discord in the family. Lord, let's talk about this. 
we talking about living in the light, y'all. We talking about living in the light, right? Let's talk about it. There are six things the Lord hates. No, seven things to test. Haughty eyes. Hmm. Mm. So this, the, we're talking about what God hates, right? Haughty eyes. What does that mean? Arrogantly superior or disdainful. You better than everybody else. You looking down on people. You arrogant. He doesn't like, he hates proud people. Arrogant people that look down on people and judge people. Oh God of mercy. I hope, I hope this, I hope this, whoo, 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 I hope this is helping us. He hates people who look, this is, this is the stuff. This is not who we are. We shouldn't be arrogant because it is God's grace that kept us. It is God's grace that is keeping us. It is why we are saved. I should not look down on anybody. Why? Because I know it could be me. And I'm just grateful that his grace and mercy is covering me. He hates how the eyes. He hates a lying tongue. People who lie. People who, my mama say, you a lie, the truth ain't in you. That was, that was rough. My mama said, you a lie, and the truth ain't, nowhere to be found is the truth in you. He says, I, I hate a lying tongue. God's people ought to be truth tellers. Lord, have mercy. God's people ought to always tell the truth. You ever heard the story of the naked truth? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a story tonight of the naked truth, of how we get the naked truth. Truth and a lie was in the, is in the pool swimming. Lie gets out the pool. Puts on the truth clothes and walks down the street. Truth gets out and walks around naked. And they ask the truth, why are you walking around naked? Because I'd rather be the naked truth than to, than to walk around and be a lie. That's that's a that's your joke for the night. That's how we get the naked truth. It's the truth. God says tonight, no, I hate a lying tongue. I hate people. This is not something I like. This is not something I approve. People that lie. When you come in the house of God, you ought to always tell the truth. You ought to be a truth teller. So then let's go, let's go deeper. Hands that kill the innocent. My God. Hardy eyes. I hate arrogant people. I hate liars and I hate hands that kill the innocent. By what you do, by, by misrepresenting who I am, you kill the innocent. Instead of loving on people, you're being arrogant. You're talking down on them, talk behind their back. You're killing, you're shedding innocent blood. There are sheep that want to come to Christ, but instead of helping them, you're killing them. By lying, by talking back. I hate hands that kill the innocent. Oh, but then can we go deep, deeper? A heart that plots evil all day long. You ain't thinking, you ain't plotting nothing good. You don't have nothing good. Nothing good. You just plotting evil. Seeing how you can hurt people. Seeing how you can damage people's representation. Uh, uh, representation. Their reputation. There you go. See how you could damage people's reputation. How you could talk bad about them. How you could drag their name in, in the mud. I hate a heart that plots evil. But then he says, feet that race to do wrong. Oh my goodness. Feet that race to do wrong. You hurry up. You hurry up. Won't do wrong. Won't spread lies. I hate that. Oh, a false witness who pours out lies. A false witness. Lying on God. Misrepresent. I hate it. We 16. Hardy eyes. Arrogant. Lying tongue. Hands that kill the innocent. A heart that plots evil. Feet that race to do wrong. A false witness that pours out lies. But y'all, here is the one. A person who sows discord in the family. 
Yo, this is the stuff that shouldn't be named among us. We talk about living in the light. A false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in the family. What does that mean, discord? That means you tell one person in the family one thing. Oh, such as was talking about you. They say you don't look good. They say you can't sing. Don't know why you get up and sing because you can't sing. But then go back and tell that person, well, you can't dress. Such so said you can't dress. And now you have caused division in the family. Division. You have divided the family off of some mess. Instead of living in the light and bringing the family together. Because I think, I think somewhere in the Bible says, come let us reason together. I'm talking about living in the light, y'all. He says, I hate those who sow discord in the family. That's why churches are splitting now. Because it's people that are carrying lies to other people and trying to say this and trying to say that. This God says, I hate that. And we always say, hate is a strong word. But God's saying, these I hate. I can't stand it. Can't be in my presence. And so tonight, y'all, we got to check ourselves. We have we have to do do some internal some we we got to look at ourselves tonight. And and check ourselves because at the end of the day, I want to draw people to the light. I want to be the reason why people come running. I want to be not running away from God, but running to God. I want to be the reason why people are intrigued to learn more about Christ. That's what I want to be. I want to be somebody that God can say, that's my child. We got to check ourselves, y'all. We really do. Because here's what I want to tell you. It is, a, it, it is an honor to be chosen by God. It is an honor to be kept by God. And so some of us are squandering our opportunity and abusing the power that God has given us. Oh, my God. We are squandering opportunity and, and the authority that God has given us. We're using what God has given us for bad. We got to check ourselves, y'all, because I, I'm telling you, and, and, and I want y'all to hear my heart tonight. I want y'all to hear my heart. Everyone who's here. Whether you're part of Macedonia, whether you whether you're looking at Macedonia, whether whether you 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 flirting with the idea of becoming a part of Macedonia, I want to say this tonight: that I don't condone. I don't condone us not loving on people. I don't I don't condone us not us treating people right. That's not that's not who Pastor Jay is. And so I want y'all to catch that tonight. If that's not who Pastor Jay is, that's not who Macedonia is. Catch my flow tonight. Because I want y'all to have my heart. We love on people. We don't, we don't, we don't carry drama. Here it is. I'm gonna give y'all tonight. If somebody calls you with some mess this week, if somebody calls you and say, girl, let me tell you, this is what I want, this is what I want you to tell them. This is what I want you to tell them. Listen, instead of talking, let's pray for them. I'm not going I'm not going to talk. I'm I'm not I'm I'm not going to talk. But we can pray together. If you don't want to pray, get off my phone. But what we're not going to do is talk. We're going to pray for them. You could because here it is, y'all. We have to be very careful cuz while we talking about people who 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 may slip or who didn't slip, you better watch it. You better watch it, because if you're not careful, you will slip. And then that same person that was talking with you going to talk about you. We have to be careful. We must be compassionate. Y'all, let's go deeper, because we're not going we, we to get all, all through this tonight. But that's okay. He says, let's go back to Ephesians. Verse, let's, go, let's go to verse 5. You can be sure that no immoral impure or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God for greedy for a greedy person is idolater worshiping the things of this world y'all here it is I love this that Paul 
Paul goes back and said, listen, if you're immoral, you're impure, or you're greedy, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Not going to happen. Won't happen. You can try, but it won't happen. Because he, and this is what I love. He says a greedy person basically is serving an, a, an idol God. Oh, man. For a greed, because catch this, because it is worshiping the things of the world. Greedy people want the money. They want the house. They want the cars. They want the shoes. They want everything that looks good on this earth. And he is saying you are worshiping those when you when your main focus is the money, the cars, the clothes. When your main focus is everything else but pleasing God, you're worshiping those things and not God. We got to be careful, y'all. Yes, we need money to live, but I don't worship it. I know who supplies all my needs. Yes, we need a car to drive, but I don't worship it. God, listen, y'all, I love, I love my ride. I do. I love my ride. But you'll never see me on a Sunday washing my ride and not worshiping God. My ride don't come before God. Y'all, y'all help me. Is this making sense tonight? Please, I, I hope this is making sense. So he says, a greedy person basically saying, listen, you're not worshiping God. You are worshiping the things. And he said, it won't happen. You can't get in. Let's go. Let's go to six. And let's let's, let's do six. And then we'll, we'll, we might stop at six and see, we'll see where that goes. Verse six says Ephesians chapter, chapter five. Ephesians chapter five. Verse six says this. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse their sins. For the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Who Lord have mercy. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse their sins. Y'all, don't be fooled by those who try to excuse their sins. For the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Y'all, y'all know this. Here's, a, here's another one excuse. God know my heart. <laughs> That's our number one excuse. God knows my heart. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to do better. I'm, I'm trying. God, y'all, let's, let's, I'm going to give you my second point. I'm going to give you my second point. Not point empowerment key. I'm going to give you my second empowerment key tonight. Second empowerment key. Living in the light requires discipline and accountability. Second empowerment key tonight. Living in the light requires discipline and accountability. Living in the light requires discipline and accountability. I had somebody, I had somebody, I had somebody to, to share with me and they said, but pastor, please don't judge me. I said, I never judge. That's not my job. Cause why would I point my finger and judge you when when I know who what I've done? I know who I am. I, I like I said, it's by God's grace. I would never do that. But y'all, just what I told this person, I'm gonna hold you accountable as a pastor, as a pastor, as your pastor. I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let you. Have an excuse for why you do what you do, and that be cool. Cause y'all catch, catch, cause catch this. God gonna hold me accountable for that. On this day, such as said this, and you just you just roll with the excuse they gave you for why they were still living the way they was living, and 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 living and not obeying me. Y'all, I'm gonna hold. You, I'm gonna tell you what the words say. Now it's up to you to do what you do. But I'm going to tell you what the, I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to challenge you because y'all, we got to get better. When you came to Christ 20 something years ago, you ought to show some type of growth for 20 years ago. There ought to be some type of growth. When I see my kids, my, my oldest child, 16 years old, getting ready to be 17 in July. There is some growth that I can say, man, she is growing. She has she has grown. Because I ought to see, there ought to be some type of sign that as you get older, there ought to be some maturity. Lord have mercy. 
You shouldn't be in, you shouldn't be following Christ for 20, 30 years, and there's no maturity. And you're not matured nowhere. I'm gonna hold you accountable. And you, here's the thing, I'm gonna take it a step further. You ought to have somebody on your team that holds you accountable. You ought to have somebody that that you that you can call on a weekly basis and say, hey, how was your week? Oh, I did this, I kind of slipped this week. Myself, your pastor has an accountability. My best friend, Pastor Rondell Davis at Hampton Way, Hampton Way, Higher Way, Hampton, in, in Hampton, Virginia, my, my friend, he holds me accountable. He checks on me. How was your week, bro? How did you how did you keep yourself together? How'd you challenge yourself? What you read this week? What is God, what is God saying to you? How are you dealing with, 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 with who you are? Because y'all, you get tested, I get tested. We all, we all getting tested. We all have areas that we need to sure up. So I have somebody who says, listen, man, how you doing? You ought to have somebody that you trust that challenges you to be better. That challenges you to grow in the things of God. That challenges you to be mature. That challenges you to love. That challenges you to be the light. You ought to have somebody. And here it is. I'm going to challenge everybody in our church. I'm going to challenge you to get your accountability partner. And I'm going to tell you, this time I'm going to follow up. Because when I see you, I'm going to say, hey, who's your accountability? Who holds you accountable? Who's that person you check in with? Who's that person that you trust to check you? You ought to have somebody that check you, that can check you, that has your permission to check you. It requires, y'all, it requires, in order to live, it requires discipline and accountability. You ought to be disciplined. You shouldn't have an excuse. If you say, man, I, I slipped up. I made a mistake. That's on me. I slipped up. That's on me. But he says, because catch this, y'all, if you make an excuse once, you'll make an excuse again. And you'll keep on making the excuse. And catch this, you'll never change because you always got an excuse. Oh, goodness gracious. You'll never change because you always make an excuse for every time you do something wrong. But it catches. This is what I love what the word of God says. This is what I love what the word of God. He's saying God for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Y'all, you hear the word tonight. So now that you've gotten the word tonight, you know what the word of God says. You can't say you didn't know. Lord, have mercy. You better shut it off. If that's, if that's your excuse, you better shut it off right now. You better go ahead and shut it off and say you didn't know. Because now God can tell, can hold you accountable and say, listen, I know you. I know you heard the word. I know you know what the word says. So catch this. Instead of you fixing it, you rather live in a life of disobedience. Lord, have mercy. Instead of fixing it, instead of challenging yourself, instead of being disciplined, you rather live in a life, live a life of disobedience. That's your choice. But catch this, that's not an example of living in the light. You can't call yourself a Christian. You can't say you're a follower of Christ. You can't say you're a disciple of Christ because those, those are not the attributes of Christ. Lord have mercy. Those are not the attributes of Christ. So y'all, I'm a movie buff. One of my favorite movies, American Gangster. And 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 Denzel is 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 playing is playing the gangster in the, in the movie. And, and and there's a there's a there's a moment in the movie where where uh Cuba Good Jr. is is playing an, another another gangster and he is trying to sell the same product that Denzel is, which is which is cocaine. And 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 the product is called uh, blue magic. And when people buy blue magic, they expect this project to be this this product to be good. But 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 Cuba, because he knows that Denzel is getting all, all the all the hits on the street, he calls his product blue magic. Denzel confronts him and says, Listen, you gotta stop that. I don't care what you call it, but you can't call it blue magic because it is not the same quality 
of what the blue magic does. Y'all help me here. What bring come on back? Here's what I'm gonna let you know. You can't call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ, a disciple of Christ, the light, the love. You can't call yourself, I'm being the light, and you can't follow what God says. You can't call it that. I don't care what you call it, but you can't call it that. And y'all, as we close tonight, here's what I'm gonna let you know. We have all been guilty of misrepresenting God. Lord have mercy. Mm. We got, we all are guilty of misrepresenting God. We've done some things that are not attributes. It's not imitating God. We've said some things that is not imitating God. So tonight, we got to start living out the light. Y'all, it, it's, it's seven o'clock. I got to let you go. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is good. This is so good. This is so good. So good. I'm going to finish this up next week. We're going to finish up um, 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 this chapter, the, the, these, these verses next week. But y'all, I pray that something was said, that, that something was said to challenge all of us. Y'all, when you, when you come to Bible study, you, you shouldn't leave the same. You shouldn't leave the same. We ought to all leave here challenged. So here it is. I challenge you tonight that as, as we walk this thing out, what it means to be the love, what it means to be the light, what it means to be the love, what it means to be, what it means to be the change. As we walk this out, as we as we journey through the word of God, let's challenge ourselves that when we get the word of God. And y'all, I'll give you my empowerment keys so it can challenge you. I gave you two empowerment keys. I have some more, but but that goes with the other verses. So I'm going to give you the two again. So you can write them down so you can have them. How, how you live reveals who you follow. So you can have them tonight. How you live reveals who you follow. And then, and then number two, living in the light requires discipline and accountability. Discipline. Living in the light requires discipline slash accountability. All right, let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight for who you are in our lives. We thank you, God, how good you are. We thank you, God, for you're a great God. You're a powerful God. You're a mighty God. And God, beside you, there is no other. Now, God, we pray now that, Lord, as we read your word tonight, as we study tonight, we thank you for pouring uh, into us tonight. Lord, it may have been a hard, hard word for probably all of us because you checked us, God. But God, thank you for checking us and thank you for your grace and mercy that gives us time, that covers us as we as we strive to be who you called us to be. Now, God, I pray that God, I pray for those who may be dealing with some of the things we called out. And Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you give them strength tonight. Strength, oh God, um, to continue to, to fight off the temptation. But then, God, I pray that they will have a strong partner with them to help them pray together. Father, I pray tonight that we were all we all grew tonight. That, if, that all of us grew a few inches tonight and was challenged by your word. So, God, I love you. God, I, we bless you tonight. Forgive us for what we're guilty of. Forgive us of our sins, God. Forgive us. And, God, strengthen us in the areas where we need strengthen. God, we love you and we bless you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Listen, y'all. Um, join me this Sunday, if you can, um, on, either online or or in person service will be at, at 11 um uh, um at 11 a.m. um this Sunday y'all we're continuing our series of of um my, my mind drawing a blank we're continuing our series of allow me to reintroduce myself and so join us uh this Sunday whether online or whether in in person y'all I love y'all I love every each and every one of y'all and so, y'all, um, let's continue to challenge ourselves. God wants to do a great work in all of us and let us avail ourselves to be used by God. Um, so join us this week. Um, y'all, I love all of y'all. Um, uh, listen, um, y'all are pushing me to go deep into the word of God. Registration. Thank you, Sister Dina. Registration will open this Friday at noon. So uh, with that being said, we love you. y'all.